Today we're going to jump into the concept of graphing parabolas. Specifically, we're going to talk about the vertex of the parabola and the axis of symmetry. I want you to have an idea of the overall roadmap of where we're going. This lesson will talk about the vertex and the axis of symmetry. In the next few lessons, we'll start working on how to shift these parabolas around the xy plane. In other words, how to write down the equation of a parabola and instead of it being uh, centered in the center of the xy plane, how it can be moved left and moved right and so on. But before we get to that point, we have to understand some ideas and concepts. And in this case, we're going to be talking about the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So what I need you to do is to understand, uh, really burn it in your mind, the basic parabola. Uh, the reason I'm talking about the basic parabola is because in your mind, you need to have a general idea or, or a very, um, I say a general idea, but what I mean is a, you have to burn this image in your mind of what a parabola looks like and where it is centered. Now I'm gonna call that the basic parabola. The reason is because when we start shifting the parabola around, then all we're gonna do is take the original equation of the basic parabola and change it very slightly in order to move it around. So we have to have an idea of what the basic one looks like. So you've already encountered this. We've talked about it many times before. The basic parabola is very simple, f of x, is equal to x squared. This is the most basic parabola that you can get. And if you don't want to think about functions, you can write it instead of f of x, you can say that y is equal to x squared. Usually when you start algebra, you look at it in terms of y is equal to x squared. And then later on, we understand the concept of a function. And so you replace the y with f of x. But functionally, these two things, these two representations are saying the same thing. What they're saying is that we stick numbers into this side of the equation and we square them and then the result gets applied to, in this case it's a variable y, in this case it's a notation which is a little more clear saying we're, that, that this function is a function of x because x is what we're changing and then the results kind of get spit out there and we've talked about the idea of what a function is in the past. So. Uh, we're, we're not going to do this for every single problem, but for this one, because the basic parabola is so important, I want to write down a few points. So we have x as an input, and then we have, I'm going to use the y notation, uh, y is equal to x squared. So we'll just make a quick little table, and I know that we've actually done this before, but I just want to do it here, because we're going to graph it uh, as best we can, and then we're going to play around with it, and, and kind of like, so in, in, in the case of that, we need to have an idea of the basic parabola in our mind. So we need to pick some points. So let's go from negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Of course, you could go all the way to negative five or, or negative 10 or positive five or whatever. But in this case, I'm just gonna stick to negative three to positive three. So when we take a negative three and we square it, negative three times negative three just gives us a nine. Negative two, we square it, we get a positive four. Same thing here, we get a positive one. Zero squared is a zero. 1 squared is a 1, 2 squared is a 4, 3 squared is a 9. So right away, before we even graph anything, you can already see some symmetry in the, in the shape of the parabola. The center of the thing is basically here. If we go to positive values of x, like this, then we get larger and larger outputs, uh, which is the y values. But if we go to the negative values of x, we get the exact same outputs as, as in the other side. The 1 matches with the 1 and so on. So I can kind of like just kind of like make it super obvious. This one goes with this one, this one goes with this one, and the nine goes with this one. And so we say that the graph of the parabola is symmetric, and we'll see it a little more clearly when we draw it, but basically, whether you go to negative x values or positive x values, the outputs of the function give you exactly the same thing. So it's like a mirror image, right? Um, so let's go ahead and draw this graph. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not gonna pull out the crazy graph paper uh, or anything like that. We're just going to, uh, in general, write down what we need to burn the image in our mind of what this parabola is. So here we have x, and here we have, I can put f of x here. I'll just put y, since we're doing everything in terms of y. And then we need to have some kind of tick marks, right? So again, I went from, in my graph here, negative three to positive three. So let me go uh, one, two, three. So this is three. This is two, this is one, this is zero. This is negative one, negative two, negative three. So I'll put negative three, negative two, negative one, right? And then I, when I graph this guy, I ended up getting a large value of nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put nine tick marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I could go on, of course, but I don't have any points that are beyond that place. So let's go ahead and plot this thing. We have x comma y, which is zero comma zero, which means we have a point right here. We have one comma one, which means we have one comma one right here. 
we have two comma four, which means we have two comma one, two, three, four. So that one is actually somewhere right around there. And then we have three comma nine, which means we have three. And if I've counted correctly, let me stand in front to try to get it to, to look as good as I can get it. Eh, it's not perfect, but eh, let's make it, let's put it a little bit higher. Somewhere right around here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is where that point is. Now let's go the other direction. Negative one comma one means negative one comma one is right here. Uh, negative two comma four means negative two comma four is right here. And negative three comma nine means let me stand in front so I can try to line it up as good as I can. That's uh, something like that. It's not exactly right. So you see, this is not a straight line. I mean, if, if you try to draw a straight line through these two points right here, then you don't hit this one and you definitely don't hit this one. So you can see it's a curved kind of thing. So I'm gonna do my best to sketch it, but just keep in mind that it's not gonna be perfect. So let's go down here through these two points. We bend over, we go down here, we go up through these points like this. Of course I could go off to the computer, but the point is when you're on your, when you're on your paper, when you're on your exams, you're not gonna have a computer, right? So of course I could show you a computer image and I have shown you already computer images of what a parabola really looks like. It's a beautiful curve that goes down, like a smiley face kind of, and then it goes up for the, for the one that opens upward anyway. Uh, but for this, I want you to burn this image in your mind. This is the, what we call the basic parabola. It just is f of x is equal to x squared or y is equal to x squared. And we plot the points like this to show you the general shape of the thing, but just keep in mind, between all of these points, there are infinite points in between all of these points, which I could, of course, fill out in the table there, that would trace out the shape perfectly. And of course, I could go on and on forever writing points down. But the purpose of this is not to be exact and it's not to put a million points on. The purpose of it is so that you can see the basic shape. What can we learn from this, right? This parabola has a lowest point here, right? And this point here is called, has a special name. It's called the vertex. So anytime when I say, or a book says, or a teacher says, the vertex of the parabola is located at blah, 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 all it means is that's the lowest point of the parabola. Okay, of course, I've drawn a parabola that opens up like this. So the lowest point is the vertex, and this vertex is located at 0, 0. Now later on, we're going to grab this parabola and we're gonna move it all around so I can have the parabola over here, or I can have the parabola over here, I can have the parabola over here. The vertex of the parabola will just be the point at the lowest part of that parabola, if it opens up like this. We'll see in a minute, the parabola can actually go upside down, in which case the vertex will be the tippy top. So it's either gonna be the maximum value of the parabola or the minimum value of the parabola like it is here, but either way, it's called a vertex and it has a coordinate point, in this case, zero comma zero. So for the basic parabola, the vertex is located at zero comma zero. And as I've already hinted, we can of course have parabolas drawn all over this plane and they can go open up or they can open down. Let's say I had a parabola that went and opened upside down like this. In this case, the vertex would be whatever the maximum value was here. We're gonna call that the vertex uh, here as well. And I've, I give it some coordinate points or whatever. I'll, I'll do some more detailed example later, but the, this coordinate might be like five comma six or something uh, there. So the vertex is basically the maximum value. Now, the other thing that I want to talk to you about is what we call the axis of symmetry. It has a very complicated sounding name, but it's actually very, very simple. Okay, this thing, another way to say it, and instead of calling it an axis of symmetry, is you can think of it as its mirror image, right? This piece of paper is a rectangle, right? This piece of paper is symmetric. It has a symmetry to it, right? Because why? I can take this piece of paper and I can fold it in half, and so this piece of paper has an axis of symmetry along the, the long direction. You know, if I could draw a dotted line, like through this piece of paper, I have an axis of symmetry of this thing because I can fold it into mirror image. Also, if I turn the piece of paper sideways, I have an axis of symmetry going like this because I can fold it across. Now, of course, not every line is an axis of symmetry. For instance, if I try to draw an axis of symmetry through the, the corners like that, it doesn't quite work because if I try to fold it from corner to corner, you see it doesn't really line up and the thing has to line up exactly for it to be a mirror image or an axis of symmetry. So this parabola has a very special axis of symmetry. This one does as well. And you can see that that axis of symmetry is a line like this that goes vertically and cuts, goes right through the vertex. It always has to go through the vertex, which is the center. And this is what we call the axis of symmetry. 
What it means is it's the dotted line that I can fold that parabola on itself and have it, perfect, have it perfectly lined up. There's only one axis that works and it goes right through the vertex. The axis of symmetry of this parabola is the y-axis right here because the thing is centered there. I could fold this thing on itself. Now before we close the lesson out, I've introduced the concept of what a vertex is. I've introduced the concept of what an axis of symmetry is. Now I just want to write down and sketch a couple of quick examples to show you numerically what these axes are. Because in your problems, your, your problem might say, here's a parabola, tell me what the vertex is and what the axis of symmetry is, and you'll have to know how to do that. So let's go over here and do that. Um, what if I had a parabola that looked like this? I'll go ahead and draw the axis, draw the parabola, and we'll talk about uh, what it is. Um, Obviously, let's take a look at this parabola. It's going to be that nice, standard, beautiful parabola shape like this. Of course, this is x and this is y. Okay, this is kind of a gimme because we already drew it on the board here. But what is the vertex of this parabola? The vertex, or the location of the vertex, is just the lowest point of the parabola, and it's right here at the origin. So the vertex, just as we said before, is 0, 0. The axis of symmetry, I'm going to write that as axis of symmetry, you have to express that as a line because an axis is a line, right? But the line that is the kind of the mirror image center point here is the line right here at uh, x is equal to zero. Remember, vertical lines in algebra, when you plot vertical lines, they always have the same form. x equals something, right? If I have a line at x equals five, that means I have a vertical line over here at x is equal to five because the x values of every point on this line over here is at five units of x, right? In this case, it's x is equal to zero because the line is going right through x is equal to zero. We talked about vertical lines in the past. You should know that, but I'm just refreshing your memory. So the vertex is a point. The axis of symmetry is a line. So this is not just an x value. This is a, a line of points that defines this guy. Now let's take this basic parabola and let's move it around a little bit. Let's go over here and draw another parabola, which is uh, over here. Let's draw it over here like this. So it looks exactly the same. It's just shifted over. This is one, this is two, this is three. All right. So what would be the uh, vertex and the axis of symmetry here? The vertex, what would be the vertex? Well, that's the lowest point. The point here, I've just shifted it from this point over here. The point over here is located at two comma zero x is 2, y is 0. So the vertex is now at a different location than the vertex before. And the axis of symmetry is what? It has to be a vertical line, right? It has to be a vertical line that bisects or cuts this parabola in half. It has to go right through the vertex. So the axis of symmetry is x is equal to 2 because it's a vertical line located at x is equal to 2. All the set of points that go through there, that's the axis of symmetry. So here we just basically took this basic parabola and we just shifted it to the right. And we can very easily see how to handle the vertex and so on. Now let's take and shift this parabola in a different location entirely, right? So instead of shifting it over here, let's draw the parabola. Let's draw the parabola way up here in space, something like this. So it's not on any of these axes. What would the vertex and the axis of symmetry be in that case? Um, well, you could say uh, one, two, three, one, yeah, kind of mess that up. One, two, that's what I'm trying to go for here, like this. If I had drawn it like this, then I could kind of dot a line over here and dot a line over here, and this is at x is equal to three and y is equal to two, right? Then what would the vertex be? The vertex is just the location of this minimum point, three comma two. Basically, you just read off the coordinates of where the lowest point of that parabola is, and then what would the axis of symmetry be? It has to be the vertical dotted line that cuts this thing in half, and it goes right down. You can see it goes right through 3, right? So this axis of symmetry is x is equal to 3. So you can kind of see the pattern here. The axis of symmetry always goes through the first part of the vertex because that's the x coordinate of where the vertex is. x equals 0 goes through this point. x is equal to 2, the line x is equal to 2 goes through the, the point 2. The vertical line x is equal to 3 goes through this, so they all match. So the axis of symmetry is always going to be the first number in the coordinate of the vertex. All right. Now, so far, all of these parabolas, except for this one that I drew, 
have opened up. And we're going to find out an easy way to figure out if a parabola opens up or opens down later. But for now, let's focus on what would the vertex and the axis of symmetry look like for a parabola that opens kind of upside down. So instead of a smiley face like all of these parabolas, what if it opens as a frowny face that goes upside down? So if the parabola goes upside down, you might have something like this. So let's take a look at a quick sketch of one of these guys. And by the way, it's not rocket science. It's not gonna be any harder, right? So let's say the parabola, instead of opening up, which is the standard parabola shape, it actually opens and comes down like this. What is the vertex and the axis of symmetry here? It's not a big surprise. The vertex is located at the highest point of this guy, which is right at the origin. And the axis of symmetry is at x is equal to zero. Same thing, it's just the first coordinate here because the line that bisects it is x is equal to zero. Here, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So x is equal to zero here, it goes right through there. That's the vertex and the axis of symmetry. And then we'll do one more before we close it down. What if we had a parabola over here that, um, let's try to do, be a little more precise. Let's say this is negative one. Let's say this is one, two, three. And let's say that our vertex is gonna end up being there. So I kind of gave it away a little bit, but the point is, is that this parabola goes something like this, like this. It opens upside down. What's the vertex and the axis of symmetry? Well, you can see that the vertex is the inner, is the kind of where these kind of X and Y values there, the coordinates of this top point here. So the vertex is negative one comma three, that's X comma Y. And the axis is going to be this line, whatever this line is that bisects this thing, which has to be x is equal to negative 1 right here. It's the one that goes through there. So this lesson was all about introducing concepts. We're going to be taking these parabolas that we've been learning about, and we've kind of talked about parabolas being quadratic functions, right? And we have graphed some of them. Of course, we already know how to graph things. But what we have not done is, lay, is done terminology. You have to know what a vertex is, because why? Later on down the road, we're gonna be writing these parabolas or these quadratic equations in terms of their vertex. In other words, we're gonna, you know, when we talked about equations of lines, you, you, you know, we learned three different ways to write the equation of a line, or if, at least a couple of different ways. We learned the mx plus b, and then we learned the point slope form, and we learned a couple of different ways to write equations of lines. Well, there's more than one way to write the equation of a parabola. And so we're gonna learn about those. But in order for us to get there, we have to understand what the vertex of, and the axis of symmetry of a parabola is. So I want you to mostly burn this in your mind, burn the shape of the parabola in where the lowest point is for the basic parabola, x squared, which the vertex is at zero, zero, and this axis of symmetry being x is equal to zero as a vertical line. And then we did you know, some other combinations. We moved it around and looked at where the vertex moved because in the next few lessons, we're gonna start shifting these parabolas. We're gonna write equations that move these parabolas. See, and I didn't show you what the equation of this parabola is that moves it over here or the equation that moves it over here. We're gonna write those equations down. It's gonna be much easier if you understand the concept, the concepts in this lesson. So make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll start shifting parabolas around in the XY plane. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.